Hi everyone, welcome to the fifth installment of Art Class from Home. My name is Evan Furness, I'm the visual arts educator at the gallery. And this week we are taking a look at Clarissa Inglis's work, Floor Mops, and her use of found objects in that sculpture. Now, this artwork is part of a long history of artists seizing everyday objects as either part of or the entirety of an artwork. Um, and historically, the point of these artworks, usually called ready-mades, are to either make us reconsider how we use these objects in our everyday lives, or to make us reconsider what we value as art. The activity for this week will have you look around your homes for things that you can use to create your own temporary found object sculptures. Um, and the demo will give you some tips and tricks for what to look for and how you can play around with something that you're familiar with every day and turn it into something new and interesting. Thanks for tuning in. Check out the demo and I will see you in the studio. Hi everyone, welcome back to Art Class from Home. This week we are creating sculptures from objects that we just have lying around our homes. And this demo is going to be a little bit different from ones that we've done in the past as I'm not really doing a step-by-step -step instruction on how to do this. I'm mostly just giving you tips and tricks and to give you kind of a list of things to look for when you're gathering your components, your pieces together. So I have an assortment of things on the table here. I have a lens cap for my camera lens. I have my coffee mug. I have my film developing tank. And over here I have the lid for a water bottle one of my dog's toys, and a box of screws. So in terms of what to look for whenever you are searching for your objects, your little pieces for your sculptures, um, there are kind of four things that you should keep in mind. You want to consider color, shape, size, and texture. And I'll go through each one of those just to give you the best things to look for. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is color. It's much easier to create a nice looking sculpture using things that have a similar color scheme to them. Uh, like for instance, all these green objects right here. But you can also mix colors together too. You know, think of your complementary colors like red and green for instance, uh, blue and orange, yellow and purple. Try and pick maybe two or three colors to work with. That way it'll be easy to keep things looking unified and make it look like it's all one object. Pretty simple. Shape. Again, try and think of how your things are going to fit together. So I have a lot of circles here, but I also have a rectangle. And I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to move these to the side for a minute, and I'm just going to show you how using similar shapes in a sculpture can make the objects fit together really nicely. So I was just playing around this morning and I came up with this. So I have my film developing tank on the table here. I stack my coffee mug on top of it and I take my lens cap and I set it in the middle. And as you can see, it all looks like it's kind of one object. So, finding things with similar shapes is a really easy way to start putting your piece together. As you can see, they kind of flow nicely into one, one another, and there's nothing really out of place looking about this. It all looks like it's one object. But you can also do things like, I have this square box here, and you can actually use that as you're to an advantage to kind of break up an object, to break up your sculpture into different parts. So I have a circle on the bottom and a circle on the top, and in between I have this box of screws that changes up the flow of the sculpture itself. So shape, it's good to keep things similarly shaped but you can also introduce other elements together in order to kind of break up your sculpture into different parts. Now size. 
Size is really important when it comes to sculpture. It's best to have a variety. Um, if you have a bunch of really small things or a bunch of really large things, and they'll kind of blend together and they won't add much visual interest to what you're making. It won't look that interesting, but if you have something kind of larger like this film tank, I'm going to recreate that sculpture I made earlier, and you have kind of a smaller item like this coffee mug, and an even smaller thing like this film cap. When you put them all together, there's kind of a cohesive looking flow to it. You know, it starts large on the bottom, it's kind of a medium size in the middle, and on the top we have this smaller component to it. And the final thing that we want to consider is the texture of the objects that you're using. And texture just means what the surface of your object is. So this ball is made of rubber and it's really rough. It's got a lot of little indents in it. It has a little design on it. Whereas this lid is really smooth. And when you put them together, their shapes, because their shapes are kind of similar, they're round, they unify the sculpture, but the two textures, the difference between the two adds a little bit of variation to the sculpture and makes it seem more interesting. So really all it comes down to is finding objects that have similarities but are also different enough that it's not going to all look like the same thing once you put them all together. The final thing that you want to remember is that sculptures have three dimensions. They have width, they have length, but they also have a height. Um, and they also have multiple sides. A lot of times people will make sculptures and they'll only think about one side of it, but sculptures are meant to be walked around. So you really want to make sure you're looking at it from all angles. For instance, this sculpture that I made here, if you look at it this way, we have the handle coming out from the side, which looks much different than if we are to look at it from this angle you know, where we don't really see the handle. So building something that can be looked at differently from all sides is also a good thing to consider when you are choosing your objects. So thanks for tuning in. I hope this demo gave you some ideas about what to use in your sculptures, and I will see you next week with another activity.